Hello folks, so in the last video I showed how to create some basic AI for this enemy. So it got as far as being able to walk across, get to the castle and then change animation to start attacking. Uh, I could even shoot the enemy and then it dies and falls over. The one thing that was missing from that though was that although he was attacking the castle, nothing was actually happening. The castle wasn't taking any damage and nothing was changing in the background. So that's what I want to work on just now. Now the castle itself starts off with a fully repaired image. So here the castle is basically in brand new condition. What I want to happen is as the castle takes damage, I want the images to change. So I actually have a couple of different ones in here. So within this image forward slash castle folder, I've got castle 100, which is in perfectly fixed condition. But then as it takes damage, it kind of looks a bit more busted up. So I want it to be able to do that within the code as well. And to do that, I just need to load those images in. At the moment, within this main game loop here, I've got this section here where I'm loading images. I'm just loading my castle image 100. The reason it's 100 is 100%, so as in it's got full health. I just need to load in a couple more then. Copy this down and change this to castle image 50. So when it's at 50% health, well, the rest of this stays the same. We just change that to be 50. Then exactly the same thing again, this time for 25. So when it's on 25% health, it loads in that last image. So that's fine, that's them loading into memory, but I actually need to tell my castle class which image to use. So remember here, when I've got my constructor, when I first made this, I just added in or I passed in only one image, which was image 100. I actually need to pass in three images because I need all of them. So I add an extra argument, which is image 50, and another one, which is image 25. Now, before I go any further, I want to go down to where I'm creating an instance of this castle, which is here, and make sure that I capture those here. Otherwise, I'm just going to get an error because it's expecting these arguments and I'm not passing them through. So we'll add them in. So now that that's happened, these are going to line up. And in fact, if I run this now, I don't get any errors. Nothing's going to change, but I know that the arguments are all lined up correctly. Now I come back into my castle class and here, where I've loaded my self.image100, I just need to repeat this again for the other two. So we drop that down, copy it again, and basically just move that across, change this from 100 to 50, change this to 25, and then do the same here, change that one to 50, whoops, not 500, and then change that one to 25. All right, so that's my images loaded in. The rectangle is still being generated from the image 100. It doesn't really matter which one I use. I think they're all the same size. So uh, I'm just gonna stick with this code exactly as it is. But now what I need to do is, depending on the self.health variable of the castle, I need to be able to tell it which image to use. And that I'm going to do within this draw method down here. So at the moment, I'm just saying self.image is the image 100. So I'm basically saying that always use the 100% full health image, but that's not really the case. So let's add a comment here to say, check which image to use based on health. And now I can just add a bunch of if statements. I can say if self.health is less than or equal to 250, which is 25%. Remember this castle starts off with 1000 health. So 250 is 25%. Oops, little typo here. So if that's the case, then let's use, uh, in fact, let's bring this line up. Then we use self.image becomes self.image25. Elif, so else if self.health is less than or equal to 500, then let's copy that down, self.image, uh, you're gonna see a pattern here is 50, and then otherwise self.image is image 100. So I do them in this order so that it checks. First of all, it says, is it less than 250? Yes, okay, use that image. And that's the end of this if statement. If it's not, then we move on to the next one. If it's not, so basically it just allows me to break out at any of these points and it always uses the correct image. And this last line doesn't change at all because it just still blitz self.image. So it's the section above that determines what that image is from those three based on the health. So if I run this again, uh, I just want to make sure it runs. There's no errors, it's all okay, but still it's only going to display the fully healed 100% health castle because this guy isn't doing any damage to it yet. 
So all of that is going to be handled within the enemy class again. So I come back into this code here, the separate script enemy.py that I was been working on previously. And I can add that in within the update method. Remember, this is where I'm already controlling the other actions. So first of all, I'm checking for collision with bullets. Then I check whether he's reached the castle. I'm moving the enemy and so on. So I can add in this attacking check here. But attacking is going to be kind of working in the same way as an animation in that it's going to be something that I need to be able to do at regular intervals. I'll add it in first and then I'll explain why that is the case. So here I'm saying if the action is zero, then that's the walking action, so keep walking. Well, let's add another one underneath it to say attack. So if self.action equals one, which is the attack action up here, so if that's equal to one, then we just start to execute the attack against the castle. Now in the context, context of this class here, the castle is actually the target. So this doesn't know what the castle is because that's created in this main script. So this code here doesn't have a castle instance. It's the target that I'm giving it as one of the arguments. So it's the target that needs to take damage. We'll say target.health is reduced by 25. So each time one of these guys attacks the castle, the castle loses 25 health. So I'll go back, uh, in fact, before I do anything else, I'll just add a little print statement. So I'll print out the target's health. So that way, every time he attacks, it drops the castle's health and then it prints it out as well. So let's run this code and see what happens. So first of all, he comes over, then he starts attacking. And now you see the health just instantly deteriorated. The image changed correctly, but it happened way too fast to notice anything. Now, the reason this is happening is kind of the same as what was happening with the movements and the death. This action variable is met once. So once I've reached the castle here, the action has changed to one. So this condition is just going to be met constantly. So every iteration of the loop, this is going to be run. And basically, it's just going to keep doing 25 damage to the castle. And that's why it shoots up so quickly. Every iteration is just destroying that castle really, really quickly. So I need some kind of cooldown, I need like a timer on these attacks so that you can attack once and then waits maybe, I don't know, like a second and attacks again and so on. And this is why I was meaning by it's similar to the animations, because remember the animations, they also have a timer and a cooldown period. So I'll just add the exact same thing for the attack. Now I want to keep the animation stuff a little bit separate, so I'll do it up here. So just below the self.health variable, I'll say self.last attack equals pygame.time.get underscore ticks, which is the same thing as I've got here. So it just takes a timestamp of when the last time it attacked anything. Then I set a cooldown. I'll say self attack underscore cooldown and I'll set this to 1000 milliseconds. So it's going to wait a second between attacks. Now we can go back down to where I've got the actual attack code here and make it a little bit smarter. So first of all, if the action is one, well, that's fine. He is at the castle and he's ready to attack. But first of all, check if enough time has passed since last attack. So here I just take another timestamp. So I say, what's the time right now? Pygame.time.get underscore ticks and take away the previous attack time. So self.last attack. So I'm basically saying, how long has it been since the last attack? Well, if that is greater than that cooldown that I've set, which is attack underscore cooldown, which is a second, if it's greater than that, then we can execute this code down here. But of course, I need to make sure that as soon as I have attacked, I also reset this variable. So I say, well, the last attack is right now. So self dot last attack, oops, not attach. Self dot last attack is pygame dot time dot get ticks. And then that basically resets this timer again. So then it has to wait another second before it can do the attack again. So we'll keep this print statement here because now it should come out better and uh, a bit more set apart. So he reaches the castle. There's done 25. So every second is doing 25 damage to this castle. Now what should happen is when I reach 750, oh no, it wasn't, it was 500. Okay, let's uh, let's do more damage just temporarily. So rather than 25, let's just take off 100. Otherwise it's gonna be quite a while. So he comes over to the castle. 
starts attacking. When this hits 500, this image is going to change. There we go. And it does the same again when it goes below 250. And there we go. The castle is taking further damage. Uh, one problem here, though, the castle just keeps going. So now it's in the negative damages. Don't really want that. I want it to be able to limit to, well, zero. It can't go below that. So we go back down to this section here in the enemy code. And I can just say target health is reduced by 100 and then do a little check afterwards. If that target health has dropped below zero as a result of that, I just set it back to zero. So it's kind of just a limit on how low this can go. Self.health becomes zero. So let's just increase this again so it's a bit quicker. Go back to this. And now it's going to go 1,000, 800, 600. So we should be able to observe the same damage here. But when I get to zero, it stops. So although I'm still doing damage, the castle can't take any further damage and it's just left at zero. So I know this is all working fine. That means I can get rid of this print statement that was just for debugging at the time. And I can set this back to 25 so that the castle's actually got a chance of defeating these guys. So that's starting to really come together now. And the enemy pretty much has all the functionality that I wanted to have. At the moment, I'm creating them manually. So I do want to be able to get to a point where they're just automatically generated and they just start keep like basically coming in from the left hand side of the screen. Uh, I'll do that in a later video, but there is one more thing that I want to add in here. And that's just to make it a little, look a little bit nicer. At the moment, you can still see the mouse and that's what I'm using to shoot at things. I want to replace that mouse with a little crosshair. So I do have an image for it in here. Uh, it's massive, so I'm going to have to scale it down, but I can use that as my crosshair instead of the mouse. So if I come back into my main game loop, and uh, our main game code and come up to the top here where I'm loading images, I can load in the crosshair image as well. So I can put it, uh, actually no, I'm just going to load the image as part of the class because it's something that was only created once, so I don't really need to worry about loading it into memory repeatedly. It's still going to only happen the one time. So underneath where I've got all my classes, so the last one I've made is the bullet class. Underneath here, I'm going to create another class. I'll say class crosshair. And this doesn't need to take any arguments. It's not a sprite class. So the constructor, whoops, the init method here takes the self argument and a scale argument. This is where I'm going to scale down that image that I load in. So we'll say the image is pygame.image.load. And then I need to give it the location of that image. So let's close all these out so it's a little clearer. Now again, I'll just go through it again. I've got my codes all in here. So this is the code that I'm working with right now. This is a folder that's in the same location as that code. So first of all, I'll type IMG forward slash. Then I go into that and there's the crosshair, crosshair.png. So depending on what folder structure you've got, what you've named your images, what you've named your folders, you need to make sure that this here lines up with where the file actually is located. And then end this with convert underscore alpha. So that's done. Now let's scale it down. So to scale it, first of all, find out how big it is to start with. Image.get underscore width and height is equal to image.get underscore height. Uh, that's not right. Now using these, I can readjust the image. So remember, I need to set this to an instance. So I can say self.image equals pygame.transform dot scale and what I'm scaling is the image that I'm loading in here and the scale that I'm setting it to well on the width I want an integer value of width multiplied by scale and on the height I want an integer value of height multiplied by scale okay I'm never sure about these brackets but I think it's okay so loaded the image that's fine now let's create a rectangle so it's the same process pretty much every time self.image and we get a rectangle from that. Okay, so that should create it. Now I'll be able to call this uh, class and create an instance of it. So let's just go down here. I've created my castle. I'll keep the classes together because this is where I've got my groups and this is just temporary for the enemies. I will delete that soon. So here I've got my castle. Let's say create crosshair and my crosshair is equal to the crosshair class. The only argument I needed was scale. That image is really big, so I'm going to go with a really small scale. I could just manually resize them uh, in 
uh, in any kind of software, but I just can't be bothered. So I'm just going to do this manually here. So this will create an instance. Let's run the code, make sure there's no errors. Okay, that's loading in fine. Uh, of course, the mouse is still there and the crosshair isn't. That's because I don't have any methods within here to show it. So let's add a method called draw. Define draw. It takes no arguments other than self. And then I need to draw it at the mouse position. So I've already done this previously when I was creating the castle and I was getting the mouse coordinates. So that's easy enough. I can just say my mx and my, so mouse x, mouse y, are equal to pygame.mouse.get underscore pause. Now this is a little different to how I did it in the castle class. Here I set a pause variable and then I took, I accessed the different indices. You can do it either way. I just wanted to show that there's more than one way of doing these things. So here it's basically the same exact thing that's happening. It's just rather than taking them and then splitting them out, I'm splitting them at the same time. So that's given give me my two individual mouse coordinates. Then I take my rectangle, self.rect center, and I assign it to those coordinates, mx and my. And now I can show it onto the screen. Screen.blit my self.image at the location of self.rect. So with that all done, let's just call this draw method within the game loop so that it actually comes up. So I've got my castle, I've got the bullets. Uh, let's put it up here. Kind of want that to happen before the bullets. So draw crosshair. And so that's the crosshair instance and that's the draw method. So let's run this and see how it looks. And there we go. I have a little crosshair coming up and it's working pretty well. Only problem is the mouse is still showing. I don't really want to see the mouse. So I can hide that when I initially set my init method here. So as soon as I create my crosshair, I hide the mouse in its place. So let's add a little comment down here, say hide mouse. And this is done by saying pygame.mouse.set underscore visible. So if I set this to true, it will show the mouse. If I set this to false, it will hide the mouse. Run the code again, and there we go. The mouse is gone, and I just have this little crosshair. Uh, one thing I need to get rid of, actually, is that rectangle. I was just using that for, again, just to demonstrate what's going on. So if we go into the enemy.py code, and where was I drawing a rectangle? It must be down the bottom here, yes. So I've got this pygame.draw.rect. I don't actually need that anymore. That was just temporary to show uh, the size of that rectangle. So we'll go back here, run the code, and let's clean it up a little bit, and it's looking much nicer. So there you go. That's it for this video. If you find this useful, then please do leave a like and feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.